the flying fingers of Huntley Brown. Oh, man, thanks a million. Unbelievable. Oh, Good grief. I, I, I can't play chopsticks. I can't play happy birthday. And here you are. Man, what a talent. What a gift. The Lord's been good. And you use it just to worship the Lord. Only for His glory. Yeah, you Only know, it's amazing glory. because, uh, you know, you, you think instrumentalist and then you hear these worship songs and you wonder sometimes, how can that translate into true worship? And folks, you just saw how that works. I mean, the Lord uses songs like that. Thank you. Uses players like you. And it's amazing. Now, now here's the here's the, the the really cool thing I think. Not only is is Huntley Brown a wonderful piano player, and good looking and skinny, <laughs> I can't stand people like that. <laughs> anyway, is it, Huntley is not only a talented and skinny, but a lot of people don't know this. Can I tell everybody? Sure. He is a black belt in hapkido. <laughs> oh man. You I'll know, be a bodyguard for the night. All so right. He's a <laughs> piano player who can take down just about anybody. I like that, man. <laughs> right. I like that. Now, now you were born in Jamaica. Jamaica man, yes. You're a Jamaica man. Yeah, man, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the Jamaicans in the house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, when when did you move to Chicago? How old were you when you moved to Chicago? I came to Chicago in 1984, age 21. Age 21. Did you live in Jamaica all the way oh, until yes. then? Still, I still consider myself living in Jamaica, but I just am on loan to Chicago for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> on loan to Chicago. That's now, right. at what age did you start playing the piano? Started when I was nine, back in Brownstone Center. And hello to all my friends in Brownstone Center. Amen. Wow. And, and, and when did you meet the Lord? You know, I grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. Parents Myrtland Alpheus Brown took me to church whether I like to go to church or not. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, I know kids these days have a choice whether they're going to church or not. Mm. I mean, the only choice we had was how early we were going to get to church. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, the Lord was good. But um, I would say um, I accepted Christ when I was very, very young. But during, um, I think, 13 to 15, I made a serious decision for Christ. Serious decision. A serious decision. That's when I discovered what it meant to have a personal relationship with Christ, which meant more than just saying you're a Christian. Exactly. Which means spending quality time in the Word and in prayer, seeking God, talking to God, having God talk back to you and just loving Him, praising Him, worshiping Him, because He's awesome. That's right. It's a whole lot more than just going to church, folks. It's yes. having a personal relationship with, with Christ, and that's when you, you really came to know Him at the age... 13. Yes, yes, say, uh -huh. And then you moved on to Chicago. That's correct. And the Lord has just blossomed your ministry. You've been with the Billy Graham Association how many years now? Oh, I started with the Graham Association since 89. I've been working with Dr. Ralph Bell as a pianist for his team. I used to work with Dr. Howard Jones, and I also work with the International School of Evangelism. So they keep wow. it busy once in a while. Yeah, I bet so. And it's taken you all over the world. In fact, yes. didn't you just get back from South Africa? Just got back from South Africa a few months ago after an incredible, awesome time over there. What were you doing over there in South Africa? You know, we had a school of evangelism where the Graham Association brought together pastors and leaders from all over Durban, South Africa for a week of training. And I provide the music for that. Training the pastors, evangelists, oh, yes. and you provide the music. I bet you, I bet you bless those folks. Oh man, I put it for you know. I hope I bless them, but they bless me. You know, Charles, <laughs> if you have never been part of a Zulu service, oh my goodness, man, it is something else. I, I kid you not. I, I'll tell you what, I have not, but I sure would love to be. I tell you, I've always wanted to go to South Africa. Maybe I'll have a chance. In fact. My guess is we've got folks from South Africa watching even right now. Definitely. They, yeah. Now, you also have a ministry that you do, I think, yearly in Ireland, one of my yes. favorite countries. Tell oh, us about that. You know, I love Ireland. And hello to all my friends over in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you have a, do you have an Irish accent? Can you give us an Irish um, accent? An Irish accent. Um, top of you know that's top of the morning, it's Australian. Oh <laughs> mercy, goodness! It, You're it, all confused, man. It, it's going to come out Jamaican. It, it, you just can't get away from no the Jamaican. No matter how you slice, it's going to be Jamaican. <laughs> it's going to be hello, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you do every year in you Ireland? Know, each year I go over um, to the Reverend, Reverend Alan Mitchell. As a matter of fact, I met him in Coventry, England with the Billy Graham Association about um, 10, 12 years ago. And uh, he wanted to do a concert of peace. Mm. At the time, both sides were fighting. And uh, he wanted to bring peace to a tour nation. And so we had um, concerts in which we'd have different artists perform. We'd have different speeches by different pastors. And it has basically been bringing the country together. Because we know prayer changes things. You know, it sure does, yeah. and 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 you do that every year every in December. Belfast, right? In Belfast, yes. And it's every December. Every, every December. 
Wow, I bet it's a little chilly. Uh, <laughs> Not as cold as Chicago. But cool. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Now you also have a ministry in. I'm telling you, this guy's all over the world, folks. You have a ministry in Taiwan. Yes, I work over in Taiwan with um, or TV with Doris Broham, and I tell her she is doing an incredible work taking the gospel all over this incredible island called Taiwan. And the Lord used you to record eleven different albums. Only for his grace and his glory. He is great. And he's blessed you with a wife. Yes. And four hello, kids. Hello, honey, uh, my wife. You, you can take the kids to bed now. <laughs> Nadia, Natasha, Nicole. <laughs> Nadia, you can go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all the girls. Pray for me, please. Will yes. you pray? Yeah. Please pray. Shoo. Four all weddings. girls. I bet you, 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 you just stand in line at the bathroom, don't you? Just <laughs> <laughs> you must have been to my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got all girls, you're blessed with a wife and wonderful children, and at the same time, you know, and this is amazing because my wife is the same way. I travel a lot. I do a lot of concerts just like you. And to have a wife and kids at home who are so incredibly patient and loving, they have to be called to this thing just like you do, don't yes. they? Yes, I do agree. Mm -hmm. And you know what's amazing? I've been so blessed that uh, when I travel, I can relax knowing I have my wife and kids at home praying for me. You know, and I, I'm telling you folks, there is nothing like having a praying wife. And when you have kids who are on fire for the Lord, man, it makes your ministry even so much more easier. That's the truth. Amen. Praise Lord for faithful yes. kids. Amen. And Huntley, I'm going to ask you to, I, I want you to pray for my boys as you go, because uh, I've got a five-year-old named Caleb and a three-year-old named Cooper. And, uh, and I'm just praying for that day when they come to me and they say, Daddy, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. Oh, man, we'll agree and it's going to be an incredible moment, I know. Now, you've got one other, a new release called yes. Lord... You are holy. You are holy.